Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications and let's get started. Now we do have this radical equation x plus the square root of 3 plus the square root of x is equal to 3 and we're going to find the real values of x. Now I'll be presenting three different methods. Well, they're not entirely different, but you'll see that there are different approaches. Okay, first method. Obviously, the first and foremost method uh, for this problem, uh, we could start with the longer method here. The longer method is we're going to just try to solve for x uh, and we're going to try to eliminate the radicals. So what would you do? We would subtract x from both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and take this expression and subtract it. And then I should be getting this, right? And then square both sides, obviously, you want to get rid of the radicals, but there are two of them. So this should give you 3 minus x quantity squared, which is 9 minus 6x plus x squared. Then you can arrange this a little bit, and that's going to give you square root of x is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 6. And then, of course, you can square both sides one more time. And then when you do, you're going to get rid of all the radicals, and you're going to get a quartic equation, right? So to keep a long story short, I'm going to give you what that equation is. And that's going to be x to the fourth power minus 12 x to the third power plus 44 x squared minus 49 x plus 16 is equal to zero. So that's our quartic. Now, how do you solve the quartic? There's a formula which is quite complicated and it kind of depends on the cubic. Uh, so you can kind of turn it uh, into a reduced quartic and so on and so forth. Well, of course, there are different approaches to this as well, but that's kind of complicating things. We're going to be looking for integer roots, okay? And how do we look for one? First of all, one of the things that you should always check, and I think I keep saying this in different videos, is the sum of the coefficients. Because you should always check if x equals 1 is a candidate, right? If it's a possible solution. If you add the coefficients, I, I will add the positive ones first. The 1 plus 44 is 45. 45 plus 16 is equal to 61. Negative 12 plus negative 49 is equal to negative 61. Therefore, the sum of the coefficients is equal to 0. Okay, so sum of coefficients, coefficients, how do you spell coefficients like that, I guess, is equal to 0. What is that supposed to mean? It means x equals 1 is a solution. And that means that x minus 1 is a factor. So what we can do is we can turn this into the product of x minus 1 and a cubic, which is somewhat easier to solve right? Okay, so we can just divide by x minus 1. And again, I'm going to save you some time here, spare you the trouble. And when we do divide by x minus 1, we get x cubed minus 11x squared plus 33x minus 16. So now this is equal to 0. And obviously, x equal 1 is a possible solution. Are there other solutions? Well, if you look at this cubic, you can look for uh, other integer solutions like candidates like uh, anything that divides 16, basically, it could be another one, it could be a negative one, it could be two, it could be four, it could be eight, something like that, right? Anything that divides, if it, this equation has rational solutions, then you know that they're going to divide negative 16. Okay, but going through pretty much all the possibilities, you're going to find none. So basically, we're not really finding any other solutions from here. And also, one thing to keep in mind is that Let's say you found some solutions, right? You still have to check them. Why? Because when you square both sides here, you're actually introducing extraneous solutions, which are not solutions, solutions that are not solutions. What, what does that mean? It means that they're not, uh, they're not going to satisfy the original problem because you modify the domain. Okay, cool. Anyway, so we're not going to delve into this, but I'm just going to show you the second method. So x equals 1 we found basically by uh, factoring, okay? Oh, okay, so are we going to go back and check it? Yes, I already did. But if you do introduce x equals 1, you're going to notice that it works. Square root of 3, uh, 3 plus 1 is 4. It's 2, 3 minus 1. So here's one of the problems. Uh, you could get something like uh, a negative value on the right-hand side, but that wouldn't work because you know that this equation here needs to be a non-negative even actually a positive quantity because square root of x is greater than or equal to zero. Three plus that is definitely greater than zero. Okay, cool. So that's our first method. Our second method is going to look at it from a different perspective. Hopefully, uh, you'll get to enjoy this method. And that involves actually kind of like a guess and check. I know some people are going to be like, what? Are we going to use guess and check method? Yeah, you can do guess and check, but here's one thing you need to consider. 
you need to make sure that there are no other solutions. You have to either prove that there are no other solutions or you have to show that there are more solutions or infinitely many solutions or so on and so forth. But since this is kind of like a radical, it's not really going to have infinitely many. Uh, but anyways, let's talk about the second method. The second method involves the following. We already know that x equals 1 is a solution. Even if we didn't do the first method, we would know, right? Hopefully, like just by inspection. So we know x equals 1 works. Here's what I'd like you to observe. If x is greater than 1, now... You get an expression that is greater than 1 here, plus 3 gives you something greater than 4, square root of that is going to be greater than 2, and x is greater than 1. So this sum is going to be, in other words, if x is greater than 1, if x is greater than 1, this expression here is going to be greater than 3. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. If x is less than 1, if x is less than 1, then you're going to get an expression that is less than 1, their sum is going to be less than 4, the square root of that sum is going to be less than 2, this is less than 1, this is less than 2, their sum is going to be less than 3. Make sense? It all adds up, right? Okay, so if x is less than 1, then this expression needs to be less than 3, which means that you're not going to be able to hit 3 unless you use x equals 1 which shows that x equals 1 is the only solution, okay? That's the only solution to this equation. Now, what, what is that supposed to mean in terms of the first solution method? Well, if you go back here and look at this factored cubic, that means that any th solution that you find from here, so if you might end up with one real solution and two complex, I believe that's the case. In that case, that one real solution is not going to satisfy the original equation. It's either going to be negative or the square root of 3 plus that is not going to work. Okay, cool. What is our third method? Now, third method kind of looks like the other ones in a way. It's kind of similar, but it kind of uses like more uh, different type of reasoning. And that is called calculus. Okay? So, what I'd like to do is I'm going to take my equation and actually subtract x from both sides so that I can get something like this. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You could keep everything on the same side and look at it that way. Fine. That's also okay. Now, look at these two equations. They're, treat them as two different functions. So these two functions, one of them is a radical, the other one is linear. They are intersecting at some points, right? So we're trying to find the intersection points. But how do they intersect? Well, they have to have the same x value and the same y value at the point where they intersect, right? So x equals 1 is a candidate. We know that. So x equals 1 definitely works. We plug it in. But how do we show that there are no other solutions besides x equals 1? And here's how we can do it. We can basically use a little calculus here. How? If you look at this function here, let's call that f of x. Okay. And if you go ahead and differentiate this function, take the derivative, right? How do you differentiate square root of u? you have to differentiate the inside, which is going to be 1 over 2 square root of x, and then divide it by 2 times the square root of u, whatever that is, right? We have that type of formula using the chain rule. And then you can simplify this a little bit more and write it like 1 over 4 times square root of x times the square root of 3 plus the square root of x. Of course, you can put the radicals together, so on and so forth. That's not super necessary. But one thing that I want you to notice is that square root of x cannot be negative. And obviously, that's not going to be 0 either, right? Because x equals 0, obviously not a solution, so that's out of the question. So x values are all positive, and when x is positive, you get a positive quantity. So the first derivative is positive. What is that supposed to mean? It means that f of x is a, an increasing function. Well, we, we knew that, right? As x increases, y increases, but this is just cal a calculus sort of demonstration. What about the second function? Let's call that g of x. G of x is 3 minus x. As you know, this is a line with slope negative 1, and its uh, y-intercept is 3, so it kind of looks like this. And obviously, clearly, it is a decreasing function, right? G of x is decreasing. So what is that supposed to mean? I have an increasing function, and I have a decreasing function, and they intersect at one point. That's it. And that is going to be at x equals 1. So x equals 1 is going to be the only solution for this equation. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. I hope you enjoyed the video. This brings us to the end of it. And I'll see you tomorrow with another problem. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And bye-bye.